Let's talk about the key definitions that are needed for circuits. I like this. People are usually shocked when they find out I'm not a good electrician. All right, let's talk about moving charges. And this is going to be how we're going to be defining current. So we're going to define electric current as just a movement of charges. And just to remind you, remember that charges can be positive, for example, they can be negative. So there's two different types of charge. Do you remember that a positive and a positive, they repel each other? Negative and a negative repel each other. And we've got a positive and a negative, they attract each other. So this is what we're talking about for charges. And now, um, when we actually are considering an equation then for the current, we've got one from the data book that goes like this. I equals delta Q divided by delta T. That's all you need. So let's maybe start defining some of these variables here. So capital I here is the current. That's how we're going to define it. And it's measured in amperes or amps, if you're American. Okay, delta Q, that's charge, and charge is measured in coulombs. And we've got change in time, that's measured in seconds. So you could also think, that's why I put this one here, um, I think of the current then as just coulombs per second. So in other words, we could say here, or we could say coulombs you know, per second. That's another way to do it because, you know, it's coulombs over seconds. So you could think of it that way, yes. And a really important piece that's going to be super important when we consider uh, circuits is this. This is super, super important, okay? That the IB uses conventional current. So when they say the direction of the current, we use what's called the conventional current, which is where positive particles would go. This is a bit silly because we've known for you know <laughs> more than 100 years that it's actually electrons that move around. It's the negative particles. But for some reason in the IB, they decided, you know what, let's use the one we know for sure is wrong. So, oh well. So that means when we're going to be talking about current, just remember, we're considering where positive particles would go. Even though it's not real, it's actually negatives. But we're going to consider positives. All right. So if we're going to be moving charges around, we have to do some work. And we're going to define this. The potential difference is going to be the work done per charge in order to move a positive charge. Remember, that's because that's what we consider current between two points on a path. That sounds a bit confusing, but we have a nice equation for it as well in our data book. It just goes V equals W over Q. So this is how we define it here. Now let's talk about the units for this thing. We've got uh, work done. Remember, that's a unit of uh, energy because um, work done is also energy. Um, we've got charge. That's measured in coulombs. And then potential difference. Then you'd think, oh, it could be joules per coulomb, which it can. But we have another unit. We use just volts. Okay, so we actually call these volts. But we could also, like I said, technically we could say joules per coulomb. Sure, but this is the main one we're going to be using, okay? We're going to be use volts. Now, this is a really important piece right here, is that, especially in the IB here, don't use the word voltage. I know you're tempted to, but don't. Uh, it better is to use the word potential difference, or PD for short. This is uh, instead. So we don't say the voltage equals W over Q. We're going to say the potential difference equals W over Q. This is going to be very, very important, so keep that in mind when you're looking at IP exams about what to actually look at. We're going to be using what's called PD for short. So again, this is a really, really important piece right here. Make sure you know this right here, okay? That potential difference called PD. We don't say voltage, even though it is measured in volts, okay? Now here's a little definition that might be useful here. I mean, technically we need it later, but I think the explanation can come here. Because we're going to be asking, okay, what's the kinetic energy of an electron that's been accelerated across a potential difference, or PD, of 1 volt? Well, let's start off with that equation we just learned. Okay, v equals W over Q. Now, W is a form of energy, right? That's a form of energy, so we can actually say, because that's work. Work is energy. So we can call this right here, actually, it turns out this will be the kinetic energy of this electron. So that means, then, that we can say that V equals you know, EK over Q. And that means then we can define EK then of this electron will just be, let's say it'll be V times Q. Um, so we can say that's a Q times V. But for an electron, okay, we tend to use uh, a little symbol for that. So the charge of an electron, uh, we actually write it with a little lowercase e. Okay, we're going to use this one, electron charge E. So that means I'm going to end up with EK, the kinetic energy of this electron, is going to be E times V. This is going to be what I'm going to need. So what are we going to do with this? Well, we can look this up. Uh, 
So it turns out, let's see now, we can do, we can look up the value for E. It's on your data booklet, and it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That is the charge of one electron. And it's actually the elementary charge. So it turns out all charges in the universe seem to be some multiple of this. So either 2e or 3e or just 1e or whatever. But everything seems to be this. We call that quantum mechanics because everything is quantized. Everything seems to come in with some multiple of that. So that's e. We still got to multiply it by 1 volt. It turns out a coulomb times a volt, well, look at that one right there, coulomb times a volt. That has units of energy. So that means then we're going to end up with, well, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 1. Turns out that's just going to give us this. 1, and we're actually going to have a definition. We're going to call it 1 EV. It turns out that's what we're going to call it. So the electron volt is a unit of energy. We're going to say 1 electron volt. Then it's just going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Now it's no longer coulombs times volts, because remember, if we take a coulomb here times a volt, we end up with a units of energy. So it's just going to be joules. This is the piece we're going to need. Okay, this right here, this is not on your data booklet. But it's going to be really, really important. So later on when we're working with like energies in electron volts, and you look in your data booklet, I can't find where the electron volt is. Nice easy unit is you take 1e times 1v, and it turns out that just gives you this number, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, because that's the unit, uh, that's what e is. Um, and it turns out when you multiply coulombs of volts, you end up with joules. So 1 EV, 1 electron volt, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Yay!